What's up, Fight Fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I got some new news for you, an update concerning Anthony Joshua. Um, I was watching a interview uh, by Seconds Out, and Radio Raheem, which is my boy, shout out to him, he was interviewing Eddie Hearn, and Eddie Hearn was stating that if Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua don't fight on April 13th, he doesn't know when they're going to fight because after that, Anthony Joshua will have then start having mandatories to satisfy his uh, sanctioning bodies from all the belts that he has, you know, and, um, you know, and then he was just stating like, hey, if he doesn't, you know, if that fight doesn't happen, we don't really know when. So, you know, and I, I believe that is a um, message to Deontay Wilder, you know, um, and I, you know, I've read other videos. Of course, I do that just to get everyone's opinion because everyone's opinion counts, even though it's biased or unbiased. You know, you at least want to know what they're saying to see what where they're coming from. Right. You know, and Deontay Wilder um, wants 50 50 or 60 40. Rather, you know what I mean? He said he'll settle for 50-50 in this situation. And, you know, and if he beats Tyson Fury, a lot of channels, they try to give Tyson Fury a lot of credit, you know. And they were like, well, this is going to be the best version of Tyson Fury that, you know, people have ever seen. You know, let's hope so. Okay. And if it is the best version of Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury should dispatch of Deontay Wilder anyway. So then there won't be a fight. Now, if Deontay Wilder does get past Fury in a convincing manner, okay, then I can see where the negotiation should be fair. You know what I mean? Because, you know, he beats Tyson Fury, which is undefeated. He beats Luis Ortiz, which is undefeated. Now, he should be able or not even really be able. I think that Eddie Hearn, then, you know, the sales, okay. Then that's the, the business side of it. If the sales do well, you know, if it don't do a hundred pay-per-view buys, let's say it does 700,000. Okay. Um, that's still pretty good for someone's first pay-per-view because if we looked at Terrence Crawford's, Terrence Crawford's pay-per-view sales didn't do so well when he fought Paul Stahl, you know what I mean? And he's on a totally different entity. He's not even a PVC guy. So I'm just using him as an example. You know, a lot of times when you're, you're that first coming out of the box pay-per-view guy, you know, and if you're not really known, there's a good chance that your pay-per-view sales won't do as well. And then you have to factor in also you know, people have fire stick, they stream it, people, some, you know, some people put it on Facebook, right? So a lot of people don't buy the fights like they used to, you know, especially in the U.S. That's why a lot of people claim that boxing died in the U.S., you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, piracy, you know, like when us as Americans, man, it, it's get, it got too bad. It started with music, then movies. Now it's live events and stuff like that. You know, people don't want to buy anything. They would rather watch it for free. You know what I mean? So it's a lot of it's a lot of corruption and stuff like that. We don't support each other like we should, you know, because a lot of times you yeah, saw it. Or I watch your music. It's on. Yeah, man, I got it on bootleg. You're not supporting it. You've heard it. You know what I mean? Like a movie, you saw it. But if you bought it from some guy off the street and he's just peddling and making money for himself, you haven't resported. You haven't supported the artist, you know, or the sportsman, you know, so that might be a problem, too. OK. Um, but if it gets through all that and still does 700,000, right, he should get at least, if I'm Eddie Hearn, if I want to be fair about Deontay Wilder, right, if I really want to see my fighter beat Deontay Wilder, I would then, I would give him, I would give him 38%. You know what I mean? 38% would be good, especially um, given if he, you know, if he beat Fury and Fury did look impressive. You know, because there's a lot of factors that got to happen in this fight, man, because there's still people. First of all, we didn't even know the fight was still going to happen. 
You know what I mean? And it's the ninth. So that fight is what? Um, 20 days away, three weeks away, right? So we still have to know how that fight is going to pan out, okay? Now, and then the negotiations come down because they have to be realistic, realistic negotiations. You know, this has to be a two-sided affair. It can't be um, Hearn sending stuff over to, to Finkel and Finkel not responding. That's stupid. You know, these guys got to get together and make something happen. You know what I mean? Because let's let's take Canelo and Golovkin. All right, Golovkin had his he had a pay per view. You know he he fought um, uh, David Lemieux. He fought David Lemieux on his first pay per view. It didn't do so well, but it did okay. You know what I mean? But that still didn't make Oscar De La Hoya fold. Because Oscar De La Hoya did the same thing Eddie Hearn did. Guys, let's face it. He tried with the uh, with, with uh, the flat rate. He tried with the flat rate, and I think it was like fifteen million or something like that. And the, and uh, Golovkin wouldn't take it. All right, and then they kept going back and back and back, you know. And then the WBC wanted to make Canelo, you know, force Canelo to fight him, and Canelo gave that belt up, right? And then everyone shunned Canelo for doing that because no Mexican fighter ever done that. Okay, so you know a lot of things that happen. And, you know, and Canelo, they, you know, and Oscar De La Hoya, they were the A-side. And a lot of people were like, oh, man, you're scared and this and that and the other. You know, and I was against him giving up the WBC belt because, you know, I knew that I seen what they were doing. I seen that they were waiting Golovkin out. But anyway, that's just an exa example, you know. Then they, um, they agreed to, I think, a 37% split and gave uh, Canelo the rest, okay, so I don't see that this is being no different because, you know, Deontay Wilder, he was a guy that wasn't avoided. You know what I'm saying? In the heavyweight division, he was not avoided. He was just a fighter that was protected and he was held back from fighting the best for whatever reason. You know what I mean? If they, they probably, I don't know if they had confidence in him or they felt he wasn't ready or whatever the case was. They did not have confidence, and they did not want him to fight the best guys, okay? Take Luis or King Kong Ortiz, for example. They didn't fight this dude until this dude was way in his 30s. Why didn't you fight him three years ago, okay? They didn't want that fight because they knew Luis King Kong Ortiz was a threat three years ago, and they blamed it on um, banned substances and performance-enhancing drugs, right? Well, he got popped with a banned substance, but the origin of the banned substance was, oh, it was blood pressure medication. Well, those are signs that someone's getting old, bro. You know what I mean? I'm 39, all right? I had a little struggle with blood pressure medicine. I don't, I'm not on it now, thank God. But, I'm, but that's, old, well, that's one of the things you go through when you get older. Your body starts to break down. You know what I mean? So that's an edge. They know, well, damn, this guy's on blood pressure medication. Guess what? Let's fight him. Because we don't fight him now. This is the best time to fight him. Oh, Anthony Joshua didn't fight him. You know what I mean? You know, that's our hole in the boat. That's our hole in the boat. We got it. Let's fight. Let's fight him right now. You know what I mean? And this will make a big argument or a big case for us fighting Anthony Joshua now so we can ask for 40, you know what I mean, 40, 60 or something like that or a high number so they can cash out on this dude. You know what I mean? So I think that was the case. But, but yeah, the negotiations, as far as that concerns, I see 37, 38% would be a good split, not 40, 60. You know, and if I'm a businessman, that's how I'm going to look at it. You know, uh, not 50, 50, because Deontay Wilder, he's late in the game. He's had all those fights and, you know, he has, he's only fought two guys, maybe three or four guys. You know, let's give him that, three or four guys. You know, but two major guys, you know, in in the sport. And I think, because, I mean, because, and then let's say what type of, how the, how the public will react to him beating Fury too. You know what I mean? Because if Fury if Fury goes in there and looks terrible or tacky or slow or whatever, they're gonna say he wasn't ready no way. And then he won't get credit for it. So then we'll go back to that. Okay, well no, you know, and then I can understand on the wilder side 
Wilder being frustrated. Well, I don't get the just reward. And then he will, you know, then it's easy for a person like that to be like, okay, well, it don't matter who I beat. I won't get credit for it. You know what I mean? So then that'll be the argument. And everybody on the wilder side is going to say, yeah, you know what? You're right. It ain't going to matter who you beat. Anthony Joshua don't want to fight you. Eddie Hearn don't want him in there with you. That's why they're making excuses. But if you know they're making excuses, and I'm going to close out with this. If you know that these guys are making excuses not to fight you, call them on their bluff. Call them on their bluff. Because it's like, okay. This guy, I know this guy. I want to be undisputed, like he says. Deontay Wilder says, I want to be undisputed. You know, heavyweight champion of the world. And you feel that Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn are playing a game with you, are running game on you. Take the money. You know, he ain't made that much money before anyway. Even after this pay-per-view, he still won't make that type of money. You know? Especially if it does bad, because you know what I'm saying? Let's let's face it, it might not do too well, right? And I'm not saying that I want it to do bad. What I'm saying is I'm realistic about it not doing bad, and I just gave you guys examples of why. So don't ask why. You know what I mean? All the clever Wilder fans, oh, what do you mean? Why you think it won't go good, do good? You know what I mean? So he might not have a good enough bargaining chip to ask for the money that he wants. And he should be expecting that. So when he doesn't get it, don't say that no contract was added, was was sent to you or no proposal was 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 given to you that you could have accepted or not accepted. So because if you know that someone is ducking you or someone's playing games with you, the first thing you want to do, hey, yeah, I'll take it. Oh, OK, 30, 70. All right, let's do it. <laughs> In England, of course, it's going to be in England because they want to sell out Wembley. Of course they do. You know what I mean? Why would you want it in in Vegas or some stupid place like that? So that shouldn't even be an argument. Because remember, that was an argument back in the day where it's going to be. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, is it going to be in Madison Square Garden? I think it should be in America. Why? You know what I mean? The, the only thing, the only place that could that could fit that many people would be that text, that new brand new Texas stadium. You know in Las Colinas or, you know, um, Jimmy Stadium. You know what I mean? That could sell that many. But why would you have that over here? Why would a unified champ want to come over here? He's the A-side. He makes the most money. He's adored in his country. He's the man in his country. That's his kingdom. Why would you want someone that has all that and he has more resources than you come over to America and fight you and you got one belt? With very little credibility. Let's face it. He's gaining credibility. He would gain credibility if he beat Tyson Fury. But guess what? He does not have what he thinks he has. That is my number one problem. Or maybe number two problem with uh, Deontay Wilder. Okay? He thinks that he has more than what he has. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't have the clout to call shots to Anthony Joshua. He just doesn't. You know what I mean? That's that's all I'm saying on that. He doesn't have that. Then if he wants to fight Anthony Joshua, take the 18th, 13th, April 13th date that they're sending to him, they're proposing to him, take that date. And if he believes in himself, if he believes what his grandmama told him, that he he's a gift from God, he needs to take his ass over there, right? Speak it, believe it, receive it, and go over there and knock Anthony Joshua out. That's what he needs to do. Not all this shit about business and talking about 60-40 and 50-50 or all this bullshit that he's talking because he doesn't, he does not have ground to stand on when it comes to business, okay? He has not made the money. And if he thinks that, and if his team thinks that, he doesn't know business. And that's his going to be his downfall, you know, because what will happen with Deontay, what the, not what will, the dangers of being the uh, Deontay Wilder is he could get beat by nobody. Somebody could come in that they think that's oh, okay. This is a safe guy to fight or whatever. You know what I mean? And he gets upset, right? It could happen to JJ too. This is the heavyweight division. You know what I mean? It ain't just one sided here, you know, but the thing is, you know, a lot of people say, well, AJ could get knocked out, karma. Well, Deontay could get knocked out, karma, because someone's going to figure out this guy got one right hand. If I stay away from that right hand, I can take him out. That's going to be a big task to do, 
But then a lot of times if you are able to execute it, you can do this. You know what I mean? Um, so that's my thing on it. So what Eddie Hearn said, he was speaking the truth or if he was making it up, Deontay Wilder should, instead of talking, make something happen. Okay. But anyway, sorry about this video. It's been a little long, but I had to get everything out. I had to get all the facts out. I had to counter punch everything. Of course, please subscribe. You know, we got the new shirts in, guys. Of course, donate 10 or more and you get one. I'll send it to you free or whatever. Free of shipping and handling or whatnot. But you guys tell me what you think about this video. Please subscribe and you guys been counterpunched. Peace.